So yesterday I started to explore the idea of recursive view rendering in Angular, but instead of reaching for components initially, I wanted to take a look at the ng template directive, which is in and of itself quite flexible and actually allows for recursive view rendering to be done completely within the bounds of a single component definition. And now that I've done that exploration, I wanted to now revisit the idea of recursion with actual components. So just to refresh your memory, we have this uh, tree-like data structure, and I'm rendering it here as you can see. And uh, I have the ability to select a particular node. So we're gonna be maintaining state about which node is selected. And of course, we're gonna have to be propagating an event about the selection so that when I go to say, select this node, something in the calling context has to interpret that selection event and then change that into some sort of selected node state change. But again, this is being done now with components instead of ng templates. So let's see how this works. Um, let's actually jump into the app component first. So the app component here is the ingress into our tree widget. And you can see that it is the my tree selector here. And the my tree widget is going to be a dumb component, um, or in other words, a component that is driven completely by its inputs. And in this case, you can see that I'm passing in the root node and I'm passing in the selected node. And then I'm listening for these select events. And these are the events that get fired when I click on a particular node. Now the app component is going to listen for those select events, call this handle selection, where you can see I take the emitted node, and then I just store it as the selected node, the selected tree node, then gets piped back into the tree widget for the selection. So again, the tree is gonna be completely driven by its inputs, and uh, it's going to emit outputs that we're gonna use at the app component level to, to drive state mutation. So let's take a look now at this tree to see how our recursion works. So the, um, oops, sorry, wrong file. So the, uh, in order to implement recursion, what we need is two things. We need an, a, something that initiates the recursive rendering and then something that implements the sort of self-invocation of the rendering. And the tree component really is the point of initiation. And you can see that it does almost nothing right here. I can get pretty much the whole code in my IDE here in the video. Um, it has no methods, it's simply accepts a few inputs, that root node and the selected node, and it emits a select event. And it really has no view logic other than it initiates that recursive view. So what it does is it renders the root node using the my tree node component. Now the my tree node component is going to be the component that uh, renders itself recursively. Now because a selection can happen at any point in the tree, what we have to do is propagate inputs and events down through the recursive call. Now on its face, that sounds pretty tedious, but as you can see, there's almost no effort that is actually required. We have our inputs and our outputs defined, right? We initialize them as best we can. The events is really the only thing that we can initialize here to anything meaningful, which is an event emitter. And then you can see the inputs simply get passed down through the recursive call as element properties. And then the emitted events from the recursive view rendering simply get piped into the select events dot emit call. So again, it might sound tedious, but it requires almost no effort. So now let's take a look at the my tree node. The tree node itself is where the recursive portion of the view happens. And just like the tree node, right, we have to deal with those same inputs and then we have to provide the same type of output, right, because a selection can happen anywhere in the tree, which means we have to be able to handle the selected node at any level, as well as the select event. Now, the difference between the tree node and uh, the tree component and the tree node component is that the tree node component turns around and recursively renders itself. So after it renders its own label, right, we're checking to see if there are any children. If there are, we ng4 loop over the children, and as we unroll that collection, each item in that collection becomes a rendering of the same node, of the same component that we're in. And again, we're just propagating the node, the inputs down, and we're propagating the events back up.
And again, there's almost no logic here. There's no meaningful state. All of the state is driven by inputs and outputs, which means that uh, we can use the on push change detection to avoid local state digests uh, unless something changes with the inputs and the outputs or events are triggered. And, um, and yeah, and that's basically it. Uh, I took these tree nodes, the, I took the uh, tree, tree node component and the tree component and I wrapped them up in a tree module. So you can see that I'm just uh, having the two declarations. I'm exporting only the tree component because there's no need for a calling context to explicitly define a tree node component. That's really a private component to this module. Uh, this tree module component, I then import into my app module where it can then be consumed by the application context, which again is how my app component can use the my tree element here. Now, one thing that I did notice that was kind of interesting is that if we look at the markup for this page, uh, what we can see, obviously, is that we're using simulated encapsulation. You can see I get the ng host and the ng conchet attributes injected here. Uh, but one curious thing you'll see is that if we look at, say, the children here, and I, and I keep uh, expanding the children, what you can see is that each one of these children nodes gets the same ng content attribute, this dash c2, right? So we get dash c2, dash c2, dash c2. So whereas non-recursive nodes all get their own sort of unique ng content, right? C0, C1, C2, the recursive part of this view rendering seems to pull that same uh, simulated encapsulation attribute down through the DOM. Uh, what this means is that some of my CSS logic, like if we look at the node code component, if we look at its CSS file, what we can see is that I have to use the direct descendant selector so that a selected element doesn't propagate down uh, through the node tree because this won't be protected by a local simulated encapsulation attribute, right? If we, if we look at the injected style here and we look at the selected context, I'm sorry, let's select that. Uh, what you can see is that it's only protected by this ng content c2. And because each of these children has that same ng content c2, then this um, selected thing, if I had turned selected on, it would affect all of the labels uh, that were descendant of the current branch in this tree, which again, feels a little funny to me. It feels a little bit buggy. Um, but we can get around that by using the direct descendant selectors. Uh, but that's kind of just a side note. Uh, really, the whole point here was to look at recursive view rendering using components, element components, uh, or components or element directives, instead of the ng template directive. And in order to implement the recursion, we need ingress into the recursion or an initiator of the recursive call. And then we need the recursive or self-invocation, which is the tree node itself. So uh, anyway, recursion is not a tool that we have to reach for all that often, but when it is the tool that we reach for, it's often the only sane or viable solution. And it's nice to see that Angular actually has a variety of solutions that facilitate recursive view rendering, right? We looked at the ng template yesterday. We're looking at uh, component-based recursive rendering today. Uh, the recursive rendering with a component obviously requires a little bit more verbosity. We have several components that actually go into the recursion. Uh, but I think ultimately it makes the recursion a little bit easier to reason about because of the, uh, the cohesion, the separation of responsibilities. Um, and it also provides for a whole lot more flexibility because we're now using a component and we're not tied to any limitations of the ng template directive. So. Anyway, uh, just love Angular, super powerful stuff, and uh, hopefully this sheds some light on how recursion can be done.